Hello friends, this is Carrie, and welcome back to I Like Reddit channel. I hope you all are staying safe and healthy. Friends, I am officially back from vacation. The vacation was both good and bad, but I'm glad to be back. Glad to be telling you guys some more interesting stories about entitled people. Today we have three stories, very short stories, and then the third story is quite long, but it's a good one and yeah, just sit back, relax, and enjoy some stories about some annoying, obnoxious, entitled parents. Let's begin. Our first story is by Vatican Cameo 714 My mom wants me to repay her for the plane tickets for a trip I didn't want to take. So last year, my mom wanted my wife and me to fly with her and our two kids to Wyoming to see my older sister. We were all ready to go when, at the last minute, my older brother randomly texted the group chat my mom and sister had with us about the trip. He said he was looking forward to seeing us. Here's the problem I had with that. I specifically asked my mother if my brother was going to be part of the trip. She swore up and down that he was not going to be anywhere near us. He had just gotten out of prison, again. I don't like my older brother because he's a thief and a liar and due to some inappropriate nastiness he did to me when I was younger. My family downplayed what had happened and gaslit me. My older brother is a narcissist who needs people to like him. He feels threatened when he knows that someone doesn't like him and becomes hostile. That's pretty triggering to me. He does things like follow me into a room alone to trap me and then tells me how much of a witch I'm being to him. I just can't stand it, but no one wants to see it. So after confronting my mother for conspiring against me the entire time, my wife called my mother and told her that we are no longer going on the trip. Instead, I shut off my phone and we took our kids on a family trip of our own. There was a bunch of family drama, but eventually we reconciled. My mother doesn't like how much I will defend my boundaries, but we get by. She called me up yesterday to let me know that the plane tickets from the trip are still active, but only the four of us can use them as they're in our names. My mother can't transfer them to her name or use them herself, even though she paid for them. Whoops. She wants me to pay her back for the price of the four tickets as well as use the tickets before the end of the year on a trip with her to see my sister. I bought them for you so that we could all go on a trip. There's no way in hell that I'm paying her for this garbage. My wife and I don't know where we're going to take the kids yet, but we still have a few months to decide. Our next story is posted by Semper Bai. Entitled Dad tries to cut in line because his son needs his meds. Incident turns physical. To add some context before the whole story goes down, I recently suffered a traumatic injury at my work. I was granted time off to recover psychologically and physically. I've lost an unhealthy amount of weight, and I'm quite tall, so it looks kind of odd. On to the story. So I'm waiting at the counter at my local pharmacy. I'm just waiting for a pretty large pickup of medication. I'm stressed because the pharmacy is busy, and I couldn't really figure out why, but I think it had to do with giving out the vaccine. While I'm waiting, a man in a Blue Jays ball cap, entitled Dad, and his kid line up behind me. At this point, it's taking longer than I anticipated for my meds to come in. I can tell that the man behind me is getting impatient. ED. Hey, excuse me, can we go up? I respond. Uh, I think they're almost done. A few more minutes pass, and the meds still haven't come up. The ball cap guy, entitled Dad, is getting even more impatient, and my social anxiety is clawing at me. ED. I'm gonna go in front of you, buddy. I say, can you wait a bit longer? I really need ED. Yeah, right, buddy. And he pushes past me to the pharmacist counter. ED yells, excuse me, can my kid get his medicine? The nice pharmacist lady, who happens to be my girlfriend's older sister, came to the counter. We're very familiar with each other, and she's always nice and helpful. She looks a bit flustered and irritated. Girlfriend's sister. We're just sorting out someone else's medication at the moment. Can you wait a bit longer? I'm the only other person at the counter, and so it's apparent who's causing the wait. ED. So, so you'll give this coke fiend his medication, but not my kid? At this point, my social anxiety kicks into full drive, and my fight or flight instincts are raging. I'm using every fiber of my being to hold back tears. Girlfriend's sister glares at the entitled dad and says, Sir, you're going to need to wait your turn. No discussion, we're almost done. ED gets angry. My kid needs his pills. I look at the kid, and he is dead silent. He looks like he wants to run away so bad. Girlfriend's sister. Sir, if you don't calm down, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. 
At this point, everybody in the pharmacy is staring at the commotion and I start crying uncontrollably. I try to say, he could go ahead of me to diffuse everything, but I'm pretty sure it came out as gobbledygook. Edie looks at me and screams, why are you crying, cracky? And starts approaching me. I'm all too familiar with violence at work and I start freaking out. I turn to run away, but I feel someone shove me and I fall to the floor. I wasn't hurt. My fear just overwhelmed me and I curled up into a ball on the floor and cried. I hear a lot of screaming and commotion between the pharmacy employees and the man. After what eventually felt like forever, some police arrived. The police tried to ask me if I was alright before questioning me. My girlfriend's sister was infuriated that they were questioning me and she answered everything for me. The police took the entitled dad outside and my girlfriend's sister took me out back and drove me crying all the way to my girlfriend's apartment. Too long didn't read. I'm a man recovering from a traumatizing workplace incident waiting for his routine pickup at the pharmacy. An angry dad reacts to the wait time in the pharmacy by yelling and shoving me. If you're enjoying the content so far, please put a heart emoji in the comment section down below. Our final story is posted by KGirl08. Entitled mother tries to keep me in special education classes. Hello everyone. Due to the response on my last post and the encouragement of those who stated that they wanted to hear more about my entitled mother, I decided to share the following story. This one is going to be a long one too. In order to understand the outcome, I will need to provide the backstory that spans from birth to sixth grade before the story begins. So, spoiler alert, this post is going to be a long one. Grab a snack and get comfy. Backstory. I was born with three conditions that combined together gave the impression to others that I was slow. The first was that I was born cross-eyed. I spent my childhood in those very thick and heavy glasses to try and correct my eyes and they never worked. I remember as a small toddler seeing two doors and trying to figure out which one to walk through and more likely than not, I would walk into a wall. Even as an adult, my depth protect even as an adult, my depth perception is practically non-existent. So as a small child, learning to walk and navigate the world became very difficult. The second issue was that I had very severe ear aches. We are talking about ear infections so bad that the outer part of the ear would turn red and my eardrum would burst regularly. I had a difficult time hearing people when they spoke to me, often missed conversations, directions, and general environmental clues. The third issue is that I had an undiagnosed condition called tongue tied. It is when the thick tissue under the tongue will prevent a full range of motions of the tongue so that the person who suffers from it will not talk right. Just trying to hold your tongue with your fingers and talking, that's how I spoke most of my childhood. This went undiagnosed for so long because most doctors assumed that I couldn't speak correctly because I couldn't hear correctly. I was in speech therapy until I was in the third grade, at which time I was somehow diagnosed correctly and underwent a simple procedure that could make me speak fine after that. This meant that many people perceived me as slow because I couldn't walk by myself and wouldn't talk most of the time, rarely responded when spoken to unless you looked directly at me. As an adult, looking back, I honestly believe my entitled mother was happy about my conditions because she got a lot of sympathy for how her daughter was. To make things worse, people assumed since I was slow that I must not understand what they were saying and would pretty much voice their opinions in front of me. I heard most of my childhood that I was slow or blind, deaf, and dumb were negative, but as I grew up, I understood most people didn't think a lot of me. Also, because of this perception, my entitled mother wouldn't bother to hide her most evil behavior, thinking I was too stupid to understand what she was doing anyway. So fast forward to kindergarten when I was enrolled in school down the street from my grandparents' farm. This school was a small country school that went from kindergarten to eighth grade. When you graduated from this school, you would be transferred to one of the two high schools available depending on where you lived. Both of these schools were complete, meaning they offered kindergarten through 12th grade education. This will be relevant later. Once enrolled, I didn't understand why I was treated differently. I was bullied because I looked funny, spoke funny, and my clothes were all hand-me-downs. I had no idea we were poor. I remember sitting at a different table when it was reading time while the other kids were reading about Jane and Spot. I was coloring at the table in the corner, wondering why I wasn't able to read Jane and Spot. From kindergarten to sixth grade, 
I made poor grades and never really participated a lot in the lessons my other classmates participated in. The school was small. The entire fifth grade class was the largest in the middle school and we had 14 students. My fifth and sixth grade years were the worst for me in terms of bullying from my other classmates, even some of the teachers. I really think the teachers endured a lot of years of dealing with my entitled mother and took their frustration out on me. I have two older brothers. My oldest brother is three years older, while my other brother is two years older. So when I entered sixth grade, my oldest brother was already in high school. My other brother was in eighth grade. When it came time for my other brother to transfer to high school, the decision was made to go ahead and transfer me as well so that I wouldn't be left alone at school for two years. And this is where the story begins. The cast. Me is me, EM is entitled mother, NG is naive grandma, GP is grandpa, AT is awesome teacher, and PR is principal. First day of seventh grade at my new school was an experience I never forgot. I received a schedule that said that I moved from classroom to classroom depending on the subject I was assigned. Remember, I came from a school where we had the same class all day for every subject. I entered the classroom, which was empty, picked a seat towards the center of the room and sat down. Two girls entered the room shortly and just started chattering away. They saw me and greeted me with a hi and I said hi back. Not much else happened, but I was amazed that they talked to me because I'm used to my classmates ignoring me. My first period was math, and when the class started, the teacher, who will from this point forward be called Awesome Teacher, or AT, greeted the class and passed out math books. I remember thinking that the math book was so big and was excited to have gotten one. Kids were talking all around me. Most of the kids had been going to school together since kindergarten, so everyone was interested in the new girl in the classroom. Me! I wasn't sitting at a table in the corner. I was actually in the middle of everything. Awesome teacher began to review the process of what the kids had learned previous years, and I sat and paid attention for some reason, even though I had never learned any of the material that she was discussing. Everything made sense to me. We were actually assigned homework at the end of the first day, and I left first period feeling a little overwhelmed. Out. The rest of the day was pretty much the same, and at the end of the day, I had two classes that had assigned homework. I had gotten off the bus that day and ran to my grandparents' house and sat at the kitchen table and proudly told naive grandma that I had homework to do. I had never had homework before. Nice grandma was excited for me and fixed me a snack and told me homework was first before playing, so she says, get to work. She said this with a smile. The first week was great. The teachers would ask questions and expected that I would answer. I was involved in assignments and I realized quickly that my favorite subject was going to be math. I made friends as well, so I thought things were finally looking up for me. Then midway through the second week, the principal, who we'll call PR from here on out, entered the room with a piece of yellow paper in his hand. He walked over to Awesome Teacher's desk and was trying to talk to her in a low tone and was showing her the paper. I really didn't pay any attention until I heard my name. I looked up and saw Awesome Teacher with her hands on the paper and she was looking at, at the principal and she said, that's not right, something isn't right. With that, Awesome Teacher addressed the class and told us to continue our assignment and then she and principal left the room. After what seemed like an eternity, she came back in and went to her desk. She briefly looked my way but didn't say anything to me, and soon the class was over. I left the classroom and went to second period wondering if I was in trouble for something. Nothing seemed out of sorts until after lunch when the principal came and got me and took me to the library and had me take a seat. He told me that since I was new to the school, they were going to have me take some tests, and I wasn't in trouble and that was just standard process for all new students. I thought, okay, and spent the rest of the afternoon taking these tests and I felt like they were never going to end. After all the tests were complete, I was asked to go ahead and work on any assignments from the morning until the end of the day, which was going to be in about 25 minutes. I didn't have any assignments to work on, so I just sat there thinking the whole day was strange and really not convinced that I wasn't in trouble for something. This was a Wednesday. Friday of the same week rolls around and I had kind of forgotten about the events of Wednesday until I was headed to lunch slash recess and saw my entitled mother walking down the hallway and entering the principal's office. Almost at the same time, awesome teacher had flagged me down before I could go to lunch and asked me to follow her to the reception area outside of the principal's office. My heart 
heart just sank. I knew I had done something wrong. She asked me to take a seat while they spoke to my entitled mother. I couldn't hear anything from the office at first, but soon voices started getting raised and I heard the following. EM yelling. Who gave you permission to test my daughter? Principal mumbled something I couldn't understand. EM, I didn't give you permission to test her. How dare you? Principal talking louder in an attempt to be heard. We needed to clear up a discrepancy. Her records didn't match most of her teacher's observation. EM, I don't care. She was supposed to be in the special ed classes. Awesome teacher, trying to calm EM. Mrs. So-and-so, we are trying to tell you that that's not correct. She's, an EM interrupts awesome teacher. Don't you tell me what is correct about my daughter. She is my daughter and I know her better than you do. Principal, really confused. Mrs. So-and-so, I don't understand why you're so upset. You have no idea how many parents would love to be sitting in that chair being told that their child can not only participate in normal classes, but can actually be in some advanced subjects. Her only deficiency is reading, and we are convinced that it's only due to her lack of education rather than a learning disability. Why are you so upset, EM? I'm upset because you're all idiots. Your tests are wrong. These teachers are all wrong. I want my daughter enrolled in the same classes she had at, insert previous school's name, principal. The tests are very comprehensive and accurate. We have a plan, EM cutting off the principal. I don't give a flying hoot about your plan. You are going to put her in the special ed classes or I'm gonna pull her out of this school. I am in the waiting area just wishing the world would swallow me up and hoping that no one else walks by to hear what is being said. Principal taking a very deep and measured breath. Mrs. So-and-so, we can't put her in those classes. She doesn't need them. You have every right as a mother to pull her from the school if you wish. However, he pauses for a moment, we have evidence that her education has been neglected. You need to understand that if you remove her from school, we will be required to report this issue to DHS. EM, did you just threaten me? No, ma'am. No threat at all. You just need to understand that she doesn't have any type of learning disability and treating her as she does is negligence. Therefore, we have to report that behavior. EM, I should have never transferred her to this stupid school. You're all idiots. With that, the door flung open and my entitled mother storms out of the office. She glares at me and literally stomps out of the reception area without a word to me and down the hall and out the door. I'm so embarrassed, almost in tears. And I'm thinking that they're going to be sending me home now. I looked at awesome teacher and the principal and they are just looking at each other and shaking their heads, looking as if to say, did that just happen? Awesome teacher walks over to me and asks me to come into the office. I'm barely holding back my tears. I sit down in a chair and awesome teacher sits down in the chair beside me. And then she looks at the principal and says, may I? He nods to her and she turns to me and the following conversation occurs. Awesome teacher. I'm very sorry you heard that. We didn't know your mother was going to react that way. We recently took a look at your transcript from the previous school and we believe it's we believe that a mistake has been made with classes that you were taking. Remember the tests you took the other day? Me. Barely above a whisper. Yes. Awesome teacher. The tests confirmed to us that you didn't need any special classes and I want to tell you something very important. Looking directly into my eyes, I want you to know that you're not dumb and you don't have any learning issues. In fact, these tests tell us that you're pretty smart. We don't know why or how you ended up classified as you were, but we are convinced it's a mistake. With that being said, we also know that you're behind in your reading skills. You are several grades behind. But if you're willing to work with us, we have a plan to get you up to grade level. What do you think about that? Me trying to wrap my head around things. But my entitled mother said that I was going to be pulled from school. Principal. Yes, she said that. But while you're still enrolled with us, we would like to move forward with our plan, but we would like to move forward with our plan to get you up to speed. Awesome teacher. Yes, but we need you to be on board with the plan because it will mean that you have a lot to give up, but we need you to be on board with the plan because this would mean that you would have to give up your recesses and be spending a lot of time in the library. Do you want to hear more? Me feeling a bit better. Yes. At this point, they laid out the educational plan and steps that would be taken, and I barely heard a word they were saying. I had two phrases repeating in my head over and over. You're not dumb and might actually be advanced. After years of being referred to as the R word, someone was sitting in front of me telling me that I was not dumb. And then the fear 
that it doesn't matter anyway because my entitled mother was going to pull me out of school. That meeting had lasted through lunch and into the next period. I was finally excused to go to fifth period, and I spent the rest of the day utterly numb and dreaded what waited for me when I got home. When I entered my grandparents' house, I expected that my EM was going to be there, but she wasn't. My grandpa told me to come and sit down at the table with him and Nice Grandma so that we could talk about what happened. Apparently, Nice Grandma had mentioned to the EM how great she thought it was that I was doing homework now. The EM told Nice Grandma that I didn't do homework and that she ended up calling the school to find out why. It was on this phone call that it was discovered that I was taking normal classes, not special education. There was some kind of a mix-up with my transcript because I was transferred to this school two years early. This prompted a look at my transcript from the principal and he started the process of getting me into special ed classes. According to my records, I had a learning disability and I was not capable of functioning in normal classes. The normal piece of paper that he had given to Awesome Teacher was the official transcript from the school into the special ed classes and she had raised red flags that I didn't belong there. It was Awesome Teacher who insisted that the principal talk to the other teachers and all agreed that they didn't think that the records were correct. Awesome Teacher further insisted that I should be tested to confirm or dispute the records. After the test was analyzed, it was determined that I it was determined that I should be in normal classes and that was when they called my entitled mother to come in to discuss the issue of my classes. My entitled mother thought that she was going to school to confirm my enrollment in the special education classes, and awesome teacher and principal were gathering test results along with the classroom work over the last week to show that I was where I needed to be. Obviously, the EM didn't tell my grandfather and naive grandma the whole truth about the meeting, but upon hearing that the school thought that I should be in normal classes, they felt that I should stay enrolled. This was one of the few times that I actually saw my grandparents pull rank on my entitled mother that they wanted to give normal classes a chance. The decision had been made and I was going to stay in that school and participate in the plan that the school had come up with. I committed myself to getting my grades up on my reading and by the time I started 8th grade I was at grade level on reading. I was considered one of the smartest kids in my class of 70 students. I later came to realize the reason my entitled mother was so upset at finding out I was smarter than she knew was because she had never bothered to hide her bad behavior from me. I knew all of her dirty secrets. This was both a good and bad thing. The bad was now she had to change her strategy and she started her year-long campaign of making me feel of making me out to be an unruly lying child. However, the good was that I spent the remainder of, of my school career being called smarty pants and nerd. I never once took offense to those labels. I'm proud of them. I graduated ninth in class of 77 and it was all because awesome teacher didn't just take the yellow paper and say, okay, without her persistence of getting me tested, I wouldn't have had the life that I have today where everyone who meets me thinks that I'm a very smart person. Thank you, awesome teacher. Wherever you are, you changed my life. Edit. I've noticed several comments asking about if my entitled mother ever received any money for me being in special education. In short, I don't know. I don't believe there was ever an official diagnosis with learning disabilities, but I'm sure it wouldn't have been difficult for her to have done that when she would have the medical records of my eyes, ears, and speech issues. I do know that she received food stamps and did get some sort of assistance, but I don't know how much or where the assistance came from. It's quite possible that she did get assistance on my behalf, but I just don't know. What I do know is that whatever she got, she spent on herself and cried poor to my grandparents because they paid all the bills at both houses and they grew a garden every year to help feed us all and she never paid rent or gave them a dime. I hope that answers your questions and thank you for all your kind words. That's all the stories I have for today. Links to the original Reddit post will be in the description box below. Please stop on by Reddit to show the OP some love and an upvote. If you enjoy my videos, please comment, like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell notification to let you know when I upload new videos. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.